In new unearthed comments from 2008, presidential candidate Michael Bloomberg appears to suggest that ending the discriminatory housing practice of redlining led to the 2008 financial crisis. You can go back. I, I would say it probably all started back uh, when there was a lot of pressure on banks to make loans to everyone. And then Congress got involved, as local elected officials as well, and said, oh, that's not fair. These people should be able to get credit. And once you started pushing in that direction, banks started making more and more loans where the credit of the person buying the house wasn't as good as you would like. The poor banks, they were just pushed right into it. Here to weigh in on those statements and how it fits into the larger 2020 race is Aaron Glantz, senior reporter at Reveal and an expert on the housing crisis. Great, great to have you, Aaron. It's good to be with you. Thank you. Yeah. So what do you make of Bloomberg's comments there? Well, first of all, they're just wrong. I mean, redlining was a practice uh, that existed in America back in the 1930s. This is when uh, the government actually drew lines on maps and colored neighborhoods red that had large numbers of people of color. Uh, specifically, racialized language was used by the government saying neighborhoods were quote unquote infiltrated by Negroes or threatened with Negro encroachment. And then in 1968, we had the Fair Housing Act, which banned discrimination against people of color and housing. Uh, in 1977, we had the Community Reinvestment Act that said banks actually had to try to lend to uh, all members of the community, not just rich white people. And for Bloomberg now to say that the 2008 housing bust was caused by the end of discrimination um, is just laughable. And Aaron, why would he, I mean, is this a popular theory amongst Wall Street circles in order to obfuscate blame uh, on themselves for taking immense risk? I mean, where, where does this theory even come from? You know, this is something that you hear pretty frequently, actually, um, although not quite so um, outlandishly stated as Bloomberg did. But we do hear, you know, oh, the government pushed us into making these risky loans. Uh, nobody from the government said, you banks need to go create uh, no interest, uh, I mean, so you, you banks need to create, you know, loans with balloon payments or loans with no down payment or, you know, one of the more popular uh, products of the financial crisis was the so-called ninja loan. Uh, no income, no job, no assets, no problem. You get the loan anyway. And of course, all of those loans failed um, in the bust. All the government said is, you can't just make loans to one racial group. You have to make loans to the entire community. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit more about some of those tactics, because, I mean, another thing that they would do, which plays into the, the ninja loan idea, is they would take recent immigrants who didn't have any credit record, so they didn't have a bad credit rating. They just had no credit rating. And those were people that they actively targeted to try to get into loans that were, you know, way outside of their means. Frequently, you know, English is not the first language, maybe don't fully understand the papers that they're even signing. What actually led to this? What sort of tactics were used? And why were banks happy to look the other way as long as they were making money? Well, banks weren't only looking the other way. They were actively promoting these products, as you mentioned. I mean, Wells Fargo was caught uh, with their own workers saying they were making, quote unquote, um, ghetto loans to mud people uh, during the housing bubble. Oh, my um, God. So we had specific racist practices in the housing bust. I mean, in the housing bubble where the worst products were marketed towards people of color. And then in the crash, when real estate values went down, those same communities were targeted the most uh, in the foreclosure mess. When those same people tried to go and renegotiate their loans uh, during the Obama years, uh, they found banks that didn't want to deal with them. And then you had uh, whole communities that were devastated by foreclosure. And, you know, in my book, I write about how these uh, the beneficiaries of that program were people like Steve Mnuchin, who's now Donald Trump's Treasury Secretary, Tom Barrick, Donald right. Trump's best friend, uh, all these people who gobbled up the real estate uh, that was uh, made available because of these foreclosures.
happens. Mm -hmm. And Aaron, I mean, coincidentally, Tom Barrick has actually publicly spoken and said Bloomberg would be a great president. So, you know, it's huh. it's how coincidental how these things happen. What do we know about Bloomberg's actual role in the financial crisis itself? Have you uncovered anything on there? You know, I was just looking at his financial disclosures this morning to try to figure out, well, did he have any stake in any of these companies? And you know what I found out is that he, unlike all the other presidential candidates, has not released his financial disclosures yet. So he, the $60 billion man who wants to be president, uh, he said, I'm so rich, I need an extension to tell the public where my money is. <laughs> Very interesting. And yeah. do you think that this speaks to a sort of broader ideology that he holds? Um, I mean, it really shows his overall framing. And in this case, his framing really r lines up actually with people like Steve Mnuchin, our, our Treasury Secretary, who profited off of the housing bust. Uh, Trump's chief bank regulator, Joseph Odding, uh, who was Mnuchin's right-hand man at One West, who was running this foreclosure machine. Um, he, they are right now in the Trump administration uh, trying to weaken these anti-discrimination laws and the Community Reinvestment Act, which I mentioned earlier. And with his statements uh, at that forum, Bloomberg is clearly aligning himself uh, with that perspective as opposed to the perspective that you'll hear from Elizabeth Warren or Bernie Sanders or Pete Buttigieg, uh, where they're all saying, hey, we need to strengthen these anti-discrimination and community lending laws and make major investments uh, in these communities. Bloomberg is saying giving them credit is a big mistake. Uh, banks should be uh, free uh, to do whatever they want and only lend to the rich. Mm. Mm. Oh, I think it says it all that during that same time period, he play, paid a solidarity visit to Goldman Sachs because they're being treated so meanly. Kind there of you tells go. you everything. Aaron, so great to have your expertise. Thank, thank you, you so Aaron. much. My pleasure. Thank you. Next up on Rising, we're going to dive into the hidden history of voter suppression with author Tom Hartman. That is next.